A promise is a promise. Tiffany loved the new youth worker at her church. It wasn't just that the new youth worker was dynamic or that the kids were finally doing activities and becoming more active and involved in their church or that she was meeting other kids from the community. But this was the first youth worker that actually spoke to her, that actually acknowledged her. The youth worker would actually come to her by name and ask her questions like she was interested. And this made Tiffany feel special. One day when they were out on a youth trip, Tiffany expressed a desire to go get ice cream. The youth worker said, in a couple of weeks. Tiffany, a promise is a promise. Don't put it out there if you don't mean it. The youth minister, the youth worker again said, for some reason this response really, really did trigger Tiffany. And so she turned to the youth worker one more time and said, do you promise? We live in an era where words are used to get people what they want. Are made to get people what they want. Sometimes people will even say something not so true to solicit from others a certain reaction. George Santos ran a whole campaign on saying exactly what people wanted to hear to get results. He attended the prestigious Horace Mann Preparatory School. The school says they have no records of him ever attending. He got a degree from NYU and Barat College. Not true. He worked at Citibank in Sachs. He admitted this was not true. He ran a charity, he's Jewish and his grandparents fled the Holocaust. He knew the victims of the Pulse nightclub shooting. He owns real estate. His mother died twice. His apartment was robbed. And the list goes on. And now he's appeared in Brazil lately. Because guess what? When he was on TV, they recognized his face as well. And now he's admitting to use a stolen checkbook to buy goods in a Brazilian suburb. What amazes me is this person ran a whole campaign and won on words that were not true. Words and promises are definitely being compromised in our society. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus makes a promise to the disciples to send the Holy Spirit. He's getting out of Dodge and he wants them to know they will not have to face life on their own. Just because he's not gonna be there physically does not mean that he's not with us. He calls the Holy Spirit the advocate, the spirit of truth, and lets them know the spirit will dwell with them forever. The Holy Spirit is our guide, our comforter, and our source of wisdom. It helps us to discern the truth out here, overcome challenges, and most importantly, stay connected to God. Jesus makes a promise to the disciples that moving forward in certain times gives them courage to face situations head on with the confidence of following their call. The thing about a promise is they can be kept, but sometimes they are broken. Sometimes the person uttering the promise forgets. Sometimes people do not deliver. They get caught up. Maybe we mean well, or maybe we don't. In 2016, there was a big stink next door about the quality of water. It was discovered over in Flint, Michigan, that the water had lead in it. The water crisis was responsible for the death of at least 12 people. 
Water started coming in from all over the world. I even remember some people here in Chicago orchestrating water drives. The world was in outrage until it wasn't. And in the heat of the moment, the government of Flint made a promise to provide clean drinking water for its people. Does Flint have clean water today? Maybe. But what they don't have is the trust of the people. A promise is a promise. It's complicated. In 2014, the government of Chicago promised to reform the city's police department after a string of high-profile cases of police brutality. Many residents still feel like that promise has not been kept. In 2017, the Trump administration promised to end the opiate epidemic in the United States. However, the number of opiate deaths continues to rise. In 2019, the government of Puerto Rico promised to fix the island's power grid after Hurricane Maria. Their system today still remains unreliable. You see, keeping promises doesn't always happen in a vacuum, and sometimes there are all sorts of variables that can impact the promises we make. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't make promises, or better yet, that we should try to keep our promises. After all, a promise is a, is a promise. Jacinda Ardern, New Zealand's 40th Prime Minister, gave a moving closing speech as she decided to step down. It was a surprise because she has gained global popularity for how she operated in a crisis. While in office, she tried to keep some of the promises she made. In 2018, she promised to ban single-use plastic bags within a year, and she kept that promise. And she kept a few promises, but some promises came up short, with climate change outcomes being the lowest. Promises are not easy, and to our best ability, we should try to keep them. Maybe there are some promises you made that you would like to honor. Artem determined with promises kept and some not, it was time. It was time for her to step down. In stepping down, these are some of the words that she offered. I'm leaving because with such a privileged role comes responsibility. The responsibility to know when you are the right person to lead and also when you are not. I know what this job takes, and I know that I no longer have enough in the tank to do it justice. It's that simple. One person said it's so rare to see a politician be so selfless. Through our leadership and others, we also see that sometimes promises are heavy. Sometimes they're hard. Sometimes they feel like a burden and a yoke because you are working with systems, there's no solo act. Theologian Wink refers to it as engaging the powers. As progressive Christians, we fight for a more equitable and just community, and the weight of our promises sometimes is heavy. Promises are not always easy. They can be a burden, but they can also give us purpose says the many immigrants that leave family promising to return. In the end, we are so much more together. Promises guide our words, our commitments, actions. A promise is a promise. And Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit to not only be present with the disciples, but to be there for us. Wait on it, because it is a promise. The promise can guide us, comfort us, and inspire us in our daily lives. The promise can give us hope and a sense of direction. In the popular hymn where we sing, standing on the promises of Christ my King, stanza five says this, standing on the promises, I shall not fail, listening every moment, to the Spirit's call, 
resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Jesus reminds us in this text that we can stand and we can wait on the promises of Jesus. I got you. So today I began talking about a girl child who was used to the adults in her world not keeping their words. The youth worker understood something had been broken in this girl child. The youth worker also recognized that adults were not on a good track record with this child. The report card for adults was not looking all that great. And so the minister knew if they didn't get anything else done in the upcoming weeks, it was important to honor their words to this, this girl in the best of times, we keep our promises. It is our intent and desire to keep our promises. But the truth is, not all promises are kept. And not all promises can be kept. But we make them anyway. When we can, remembering who and what is on the other end of the promise. We try hard because people and just systems, they matter to us. The youth minister picked up the girl when the day arrived and they went and got ice cream. The youth minister felt a sense of glee. Unbeknownst to the youth minister, so did the girl. They laughed and walked and talked, licking their chosen flavors on the way. Not everything that is wrong in the world was fixed on that day. Not hardly, but on a promise was a promise, and a youth worker honored their words, and a promise was kept, and the child was happy. Amen.